it, it can be so stressful for the body as well when we're really not being authentic to how we're truly feeling. Like that's such a key thing. Like if I can stress the first place to start for anybody on this journey of recovery and you know doing some deep inner work and yeah self-realization awakening it would be authenticity being authentic with how you're feeling not what you want to be feeling or not what you think you should be feeling just being completely honest with yourself what are you feeling and allowing that that's okay you know you don't have to force that to be another way and when we consistently believe that it's not okay what we're feeling or you know we force ourselves into environments where we don't feel like we're allowed to feel what we're feeling it's really stressful on the body and the nervous system that kind of thing so for me that was a big part of this was like not knowing what it meant to even be authentic you know the, the few years before that all kind of unfolded into this whole big thing for me was a lot of just not feeling like i knew how to be authentic I wouldn't even use that word at the time. I wouldn't even have known to use it at all. But just looking back, I was yeah, just so disconnected with my inner world of how I was feeling, I suppose. And I can totally just see now how stressful that was in my nervous system. Just like always trying to, whatever I was feeling always felt wrong. And it was like, I need to be different. I need to be different. I need to, it's just so stressful. And it, it's, all the beliefs that form in our mind like is strongly linked to the, the way our nervous systems operate and the physical aspect of the body and all of that. And it, um, yeah, I mean, it, it can really stress out the body and then combine that with all some, some stressful life events and then a little bit of a health crisis. And then you have the perfect storm for this whole thing to unfold. But then as I was saying earlier, then it forced me to really look inward which i wouldn't have done otherwise so it was fierce grace <laughs> another massive part of this whole thing like if i can break it down into like being authentic allowing yourself to feel what you need to feel acknowledging whatever is here whether you want it to be or not and then going back and kind of inviting every part of ourself and giving it some space and giving it some acceptance and giving it some acknowledgement and love and compassion is kind of what this is all about like all of this inner work is is not complicated it's not there's not some complex fixing of stuff we need to do it's kind of just like can you feel what you need to feel and can you feel what you don't want to feel and just keep on allowing yourself to feel whatever's coming up so like that's why i always say like start with allowing the resistance itself you know if you're doing some you feel you need to sit with what's coming up and you, you try and fill into what don't you want to feel and then you feel you don't like that, you want to distract yourself, then that's what you're feeling right now. So can you accept the part of you that is distracting? And then if we're talking about trauma and past events, you know, can and obviously I'm I'm not like a an expert on any of this. I'm kind of just sharing from my own experience because like if someone's gone through really radical traumatic events I'm sure it can be super overwhelming to touch into that kind of stuff and probably a wise idea to, you know, work with a psychologist or somebody that's a therapist or whatever, somebody that's can help you that like, process that kind of stuff, you know, especially if it feels really too much to, to go back into that kind of thing. But most of the time I would say you the matter even if the mind's saying it's like overwhelming or whatever, just start with feeling what's here and then like you can be your own therapist or, or whatever you can give yourself that support that like that part of you that that you don't want to feel you can work with that part of you yourself that's kind of that self-parenting or that emotion work technique that i talk about where it's just about speaking directly to the parts of us that we don't specifically want to feel can we allow can we acknowledge acknowledge i think is most important at first just acknowledge this is what i'm feeling like i'm struggling I don't feel like I can do this. That can be such a difficult step to take is to finally acknowledge that. Like, okay, I've been trying for so long to pretend that I've, you know, I've got to stay strong. I've got to, you know, this and this and this. But eventually when we just accept, like, I don't feel like I can do this, whatever that feeling is, 
once we realize it's, it's just something that needs to be felt, you know, we don't need to form an identity around that. Oh, I can't do this. I'm not going to recover. We don't need to form an identity around that, but we can acknowledge the part of us that just feels like it's completely overwhelmed and then give it space. So you're always starting with what's here and just knowing that it's okay to feel all of that. Like that's such a big part of it as well. It's like, there's nothing that it's not okay to feel. We can trust what we're feeling in each moment. So, and, and you can trust that you have the capacity to to hold and feel whatever comes up as intense as it can be if you just sit with it and acknowledge and accept give it space talk directly to it give it compassion it can be surprising how when we really just feel into that it changes so much 